What if I told you that you could use your Mac Mini completely portable or how about using Mac OS and Final Cut Pro with touchscreen? I'm talking out and about in the woods portable. Or how about middle of the road portable? Oh, I'm sorry. What is up guys, my name is Dossie Hussain and today we're gonna to be talking about how you can make your Mac Mini completely portable and on the go. In fact, you can use this to pair with your iPad and basically use any iPad as a portable monitor for your computer, pretty cool. Now keep in mind, this also works with the Mac Studio. Now this is definitely a unique use case situation. I see this being handy mostly for people who have like a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio, but they want the occasional portability with it. So firstly, let's talk about what you're gonna need exactly in order to get this whole thing going. Number one, you're gonna need to make sure you're subbed to this channel. Just kidding, <laughs> but that would be nice. It would make my day for sure. So number one, first thing you're gonna need, of course, is a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio. Now the one I have here is the brand new M2 Mac Mini now I have the base configuration here and if you're wondering why I went with that version, I'll have a video linked in the description down below so you can check it out after this video. Next up, I'm gonna be using the iPad Pro. Now, of course, you can use any iPad with this as well, but I'm using the 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. I absolutely love the fact that it has this larger display, especially for doing something like this, because you want a little more real estate here, and also that it has liquid retina XDR display, which is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Now, next, we're gonna need something to actually hold the iPad while we're working. So that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Banks. What immediately stands out to me about the stand is the build quality and the look and feel. It's really aesthetic. It's really well made. It's got this all around aluminum design. Even the tension and the hinges and everything like that is just enough to hold such a big iPad without the iPad actually flopping or tilting or flipping over. But it's also malleable enough for you to bend it in the way that you need to in order to see the screen, but also to literally pack away because it just folds down into this mini package. And from here, you can just throw it into your backpack and take it with you. But what I really like about the stand is the fact that it has these really strong magnets up here and the iPad literally just snaps on right away. Like you don't need to do any special case or add anything extra or accessories to make this happen. It just works and it's got this nice soft touch finish on here so the iPad doesn't get scratched or anything like that. It's also got this 360 degree rotating base so if you need to, you can share your screen or turn the iPad around to show anybody your iPad and it can also be used in both portrait and landscape mode. And hands down, overall, I'll say this is one of the best iPad stands that I've used to date. Next, you're gonna need a wireless keyboard and a mouse. The keyboard I'm using is the Nufi keyboard and the reason I went with this particular one is I love how it looks and it comes with this nice little carrying case where you can just fold it out and you have the keyboard nestled right in here. And also it's a nice mechanical keyboard that you can take with you on the go. So it's pretty cool and it's a nice small package as well. And the mouse of choice here is the Logitech Anywhere mouse. I mean, this is my go-to mouse anytime I'm traveling or I'm away from my desk. It works really well, it hasn't let me down, it has a really nice long battery life and it feels really nice in your hand. Okay, for the next item, we're actually gonna need an item to actually power the Mac Mini. Now, because the Mac Mini does need an AC plug point in order to power it up, I went with the Anchor Powerhouse 90. It's got an AC plug point here where I can plug in an AC port. It's also really well built and it's also got a flashlight in here in case if you ever need it. You can push a lot of juice out of these ports here and it's able to power this Mac Mini no problem for hours to come so I haven't had any issues. And last but not least, the centerpiece to make this entire situation work is this, which is the Luna Display Dongle. Now keep in mind this is not a sponsor video or anything like that. They didn't even send this to me. This I bought this with my own money and this is just something I found cool so I'm sharing it with you guys. Now this dongle will basically allow us to use the Mac Mini with the iPad. How exactly does this work? Well, that's what we're gonna get into right now. Okay, so now that we have everything, the first thing you need to know is when you get the Mac Mini, unbox it, you still need an actual monitor in order to hook it up for the initial setups. We first need to download the Luna Display app on both the Mac as well as the iPad. Once you have that set up, and then next it's gonna ask you to plug this in, which will then take us through this firmware update. Now, just by doing this, you can see that we've already synced here, right? So we have the extension of the desktop here. So once we get the initial setup and adjust a few of the settings on the Mac mini, after that, then you don't need a monitor anymore. You can use your iPad. Now I'm gonna unplug everything and moment of truth, we're gonna find out if this actually works. I'm gonna connect it to the Mac mini. Okay, so to raise the stakes a bit, I figured, you know what? In order to turn it on for the first time, why don't we just come out to the world and try it. If it fails, then this is this whole trip is a fail. All right, guys, moment of truth. Here we go. We're gonna turn it on. 
Okay, this is looking a little bit sketchy because this is supposed to connect by now. <laughs> well, that was uh, anticlimactic. So I just realized something. I think it's not connecting because at home, it, the, I have the Mac Mini connected to my Wi-Fi network at home. You need to be on the same Wi-Fi network for these to speak to each other. Out here, there's no Wi-Fi, but there's something we can do. We can hardwire connect it, so connect the iPad directly to the Mac Mini and it should still work. So let's, let's hope, in theory, it should work. And then this right here to the Mac Mini. Let's go, let's go, let's go, work, 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 work. Yes, 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 yes. Keep in mind, this isn't exactly perfect. There's gonna be a few things that you need to watch out for. Number one, a common question that I get quite often about this whole thing is regarding latency, right? You usually don't wanna lag when you're moving the mouse and like, you know, there's a slight lag between the cursor and the mouse. That can get pretty annoying. As long as you have a good Wi-Fi connection, you're okay. Like for example, when I'm at the studio or I'm at home, I have a pretty good Wi-Fi connection, so I don't really have any issue. The latency is pretty low. However, Luna Display does recommend also plugging in the iPad to the Mac mini. So if you wanted the best results and the best performance, I would just connect a uh, USB-C cable from the iPad to the Mac mini as well. And you're gonna have a much more seamless experience doing it this way. Now, overall, if you find this cool like me, then you're gonna find this next part even cooler. You, What you can do is if you have great internet, you can take this completely off the grid and basically just take your iPad and throw it onto the magic keyboard and take it with you to another room while your Mac mini is still you know, somewhere else in the house. You'll still be able to access the Mac mini remotely. So if you're editing or anything like that, you can still do that, which is really cool. But some caveats to note here, the audio is going to be coming out of your Mac mini, whichever room that it's in. So if you want to be able to listen to audio from your Mac mini while you're using your iPad in another room, you need to be able to use Bluetooth headphones and you're going to need to be in Bluetooth range so that the headphones can still stay connected to the Mac mini. Now, lastly, I also wanted to quickly compare this to sidecar because I know that's a question that people have often brought up to me. Firstly, the way we're using it in this video, where the iPad is a standalone monitor for the Mac mini, you can't do that with Sidecar. Also, Luna Display is compatible with older Macs and iPads, whereas with Sidecar, you're only able to use it with the newer iPads and the newer Macs. And of course, you get touch support, which I totally forgot to mention. With the iPad connected to the Mac mini, you can basically use the Mac as a touch screen on the iPad. That's kind of cool. Personally, I did find the range and consistency to be much better as well with Luna Display than Sidecar. With Sidecar, sometimes I found that when I move the iPad even just a little bit away from the Mac, sometimes it disconnects. Sometimes it's finicky over like 10, 15 minutes, it'll just randomly disconnect and reconnect. So I don't really have those issues with Luna Display. Okay, so who exactly is this for and is this all just a gimmick? Look, at the end of the day, I know this might not be for everybody. Not everyone wants to make their Mac mini portable or you know use it on the go or travel with it, but there are definitely use cases for this out there. There are people out there that wanna use their Mac mini in a hotel room when they go out and about. And in those cases, you know, if they have an iPad, then this is an excellent way for them to get some extra utility out of an iPad that's lying around or a Mac mini that's lying around. And it's just a cool overall proof of concept as well. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed this video that I put together for you guys. If you did, then you know what to do. Just in the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I did do a long-term review on it and I did it in this cool new format where I did like this vlog sort of multiple day in my life situation in New York City. I'll have that linked right here, so go ahead and check that out. If you're interested in learning more about the Mac Mini and which one you should get and what are my thoughts on it, then I'll have that video linked right here. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.